Welcome to Kellis Coder and today a viewer suggested video on ARM64 Linux Assembler. The question is on how to read input from the keyboard or standard in and turn that input into a decimal number or an integer and print it to the screen. So let's jump in. So let's first talk through the algorithm. Imagine we have the number 1234. For a human it's very simple to see that the number 1 here means 1000. The number 2 means 200, 30 and 4. For a computer this is not trivial. So we need to process the number from right to left. Just like you usually did with a hexadecimal, although we started in the previous from the left to demonstrate both left and right shift. But we need to start from the right. We first read this character, the 4, then subtract 48 from it to make it the digit 4, and we multiply it by the 10 base T multiplier 1. Then we add that to our result, and then we repeat that for the 3. We multiply our multiplier by 10, read the 3 character, multiply that by the multiplier 10, and add that to the result 4 that we already had, making 34. Then we do the same for the hundreds. We multiply the multiplier by 10, making it 100, read the 2, convert it into decimal 2, and multiply that by 100, and add that to the 34 we already had. And then we do it for the thousands. We read the thousands, multiply the multiplier by 10, so it's a thousand, Read this character, turn it into a 1, multiply it by a thousand and add it to the 234 that we already have, making a total of 1234. That is the basic algorithm. Until now we put all the source code in a single file. We're going to change that, we're going to make it a bit more professional. We're going to create a common file, here I already did that, and I copied in our print uint function then our common print function and the exit function that we used in all the other episodes. Now you tend to group these functions together in such a way that your source code is as small as possible and easy to reuse. And now we're going to create our own little extra file called input.s. I already have the skeleton here. Now let's write the input function which is based on the read system call. We call this input standard in. Now we're first going to set up the stack. I will copy and paste this to save some time here. You may have noticed that I'm not saving x0 and that is because the read length will be returned in x0. So that's why I'm not putting it on the stack. So let's first have a look at the read manual page. We see that argument one is file descriptor. And we set our file descriptor, which is in x0, first argument goes in x0, to zero. Because zero is standard in, one is standard out, and two is standard error. Then we have argument two, which is the buffer that will eventually hold the string. And in x2, we have the count of that string length. So let's document our code accordingly. And because the read function call actually returns the length in x0, that is the reason that I don't store x0 on the stack here. Now the system call number is 63, so we put that in x8, which is the ABI register on ARM64 that holds the system call numbers. And then we call the service routine, or the interrupt, by service zero, like we always did. So now we should actually be able to read data from the keyboard. So let's first create a string that holds our input data. We create a string of 20 bytes, and we fill those with zeros, and then we create the length of the string that we need to pass 
into X2 for the wreath system call. Let's include our common.s and our input.s. So this code is just injected right here. So basically we're reading the code and it's just inserted here below. That is what the include does. So now we can set up the argument x1 to point to the string, argument x2 to the length of the string, and call our subroutine that does call the read function. Now let's exit with exit code zero. And this should work. Let's compile this. Start it and type something in here. Well, no sacfuls, so that is good. Now let's see if I have the minus G, the debug flag on, so we can display with GDB that we're actually filling this register. Now I realize we didn't talk about GDB. I assume that everybody uses GDB, but maybe that is too presumptuous of me. So B sets a breakpoint and we set a breakpoint on underscore start. And this is why we set the minus G so that we have these symbols, underscore start, written and translated to these numbers. Otherwise we have to find out these numbers that's not really workable. So we run the program and now we stopped at the breakpoint where we set x1 to the input and we examine our input variable x slash and then the number of bytes and we can say the format in this case characters and you need that ampersand sign just like in c so it will translate the symbol to the actual address And here we see all the zeros that we set with the fill command. Now we step, 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 and we step again. Now we can enter the data. Press enter, step, step, step. Now we're back out of it. Now let's examine again. You can use arrow up to get a previous command. And there you see we have the one, two, three, four, five, six in memory. These are the characters. You can also change it to bytes, but for some reason that's the same. I don't know why. And also to a uh, hexadecimal, for example, floating points. So you can choose the format and that is really convenient. I use that a lot, but let's get back to the characters. Yeah, it is the same. <laughs> That's funny. I, I never realized that before. But here we have a problem. We see that the enter, the character 10, is also brought in when we call the read function call, which makes sense, but we don't need it. It will throw off our algorithm. So we need to extend our input.s to prune off that uh, byte when it is set. So let's first create an exit label because we're going to jump out of the loop at some point. So first we subtract per definition uh, one because generally you don't fill up your whole buffer. If you expect, for example, eight digits, usually you work with maybe five or six digits. So it is a fair guess that it's more efficient to already subtract one. And then in case there is no uh, character 10, add one back. So here we load from the X1 string into W8. We can reuse that because the function call has already run. On the offset, x0 which now points to the last byte we compare that last byte that we now read in w8 to the carriage return character if it is equal 
Then we're finished, we all cause we already subtracted one. And otherwise, if it's not equal, we filled the whole buffer and we need to add that one back. And that's what we do here. Take x0, x0 and add one to it. And that should actually clean up that carriage return when it is set. So now we can write our conversion, our A to unsigned integer conversion. A to I, even though it should be called A to unsigned integer, we're not going to handle the minus sign, although that is very trivial. If you see the minus sign in the first byte, then obviously you flip the top bit to a one. Let's uh, set up the stack here. And then we use x5 as our base 10 multiplier. x0 will be our result. So we set that to zero. x3 is a temporary variable that we need. That is used to read uh, the character and multiply it by the base 10 multiplier. And x6 is of course our base 10 multiplier. And we need to do this because you cannot set an immediate value in the multiply. That is one of the little shortcomings of a RISC uh, ARM assembler, let me put it that way. So we subtract one from the length because the length always starts from zero. And remember we already pruned off that extra byte uh, for the optional carriage return. Now we read into the temporary variable w3 the last character in our string that is pointed to by x1 so x1 with offset x2 now we need to subtract 48 from w3 to make it an actual decimal number done that before of course that we subtract 48 and put the result in x3 turning it from ASCII into a actual digit then we need to multiply that digit by our current multiplier so x3 is x3 times the current multiplier which is in x5 and now we add that result to our result register so x0 is the result register. We add x3 to it and put the result in x0. Now we are ready and we need to prepare for the next digit. So we multiply our multiplier by 10. Ready to read the next digit. If x2, the length is zero, then we're done. And otherwise we need to continue to read a character. So we branch to a to i read char. And I realize I put the label wrong, so let's fix that. And this should actually create an A to I or A to unsigned I. So let's add our BLA to I in there. Now the length is in X0 and we need that in X2. So we copy the value from X0 into X2 because that is the result that comes from input uh, standard in, or more correctly from the read that we called. And this should be it. Now we can print that number that we converted as an unsigned integer. And of course there's an error. And there is always an error. Let's see what I did wrong here. Oh, I forgot to import our conversion. Dot include conversion.s. They should fix it. Huh, more errors. Let's see. Oh, I forgot to terminate the string. And now, no, third time a charm. Oh, print uint with a capital I. Yes. Now make it. And let's see what happens. One, two, three, four. Prints one, two, three, four. That's cool. Now these zeros should be stripped off. 
That's one, that works. Let's fill a very large row with zeros. That's zero, that's also correct. A big number and that works. But there is a little caveat here. If we have a alphanumeric character that obviously is converted into a ASCII number as well and then add it to the total. What you could do as a sort of exercise is go into conversion and set up a little stack frame here and then go through all the characters pointed to in X1 and only copy those characters that are valid numeric characters onto the stack and then process the stack instead of X1. That way you would actually clean off any alphanumeric characters. And in this case you're modifying the source, which is also a very bad habit. What A to I on C does is it returns a zero, which is also good fun because you can introduce a division by zero problem. Been there, done that. These exceptions are always very tricky on such a low level. In a higher level language you would throw an error and that is the only right thing to do. On lower level languages it's always a debate how to handle shitty input. So there you have it, we created a little function that reads from standard in. We converted it to an unsigned integer. Now you can easily convert it of course to a real integer if you see that little dash sign in the first position then just multiply by minus one and that does it or flip the most significant bit that is actually a cheaper uh, alternative and uh, we touched upon including little source files as well to make your code more manageable so we actually did a lot of things and i want to uh, thank the subscriber that person knows who he is so thank you very much for this suggestion and next time we will touch upon the macros that I talked about as well. And I'm currently working also on actually doing a GPIO in assembly on the Pi. So there's still some stuff to come. So hope you liked it and see you in the next one.